The future soldier will soon be significantly more lethal. The Army recently announced that the next-generation squad weapon, the XM5 rifle and XM250 light mash gun, will replace the M4M16 rifle and the 249 light mash gun, with some soldiers expected to receive the weapons by the fourth quarter of 2023. New Hampshire-based weapons manufacturer Sig Sauer was awarded the contract. Today we bring you an in-depth review of the new goodies. A Lucky Run Over the Mother's Day weekend, we were out in Arizona at the Sig Sauer Freedom Days event. The SIG team had several of their latest and greatest on display, including a new 10mm which will drop into the stream soon for those who, like us, love the battleship equivalent pistol caliber. But the star of the whole show was, surprise surprise, the XM5 and XM250 NGSW combination. We were among the lucky few who got to shoot the actual XM5 and the XM250, not just the MCX Spear. We shot that a bunch too, like a kid hopping on his favorite ride at Six Flags for the sixth time and we came away with some thoughts, some opinions, and some information that we believe is getting lost in the ranging debate of why we are replacing the M4A1 and M249 in service for the combat arms position of the U.S. Army. The XM5 For anyone who hasn't tuned into this program prior to now, the XM5 is the rifle the U.S. Army selected to advance into the experimental status and began fielding and testing to replace the M4A1 with forward units. It is an MCX spear model with a 13-inch barrel and chambered in the new contract specified 6.8 by 51 mm 277 Fury for Sammy, using SIG's hybrid stainless brass case technology developed for this program. Army said, here's the bullet, make it do the thing. So SIG looked at the MCX they scaled up for the CSAS and said, I bet that'll work, and set about putting the two together and making it run. We can't sum it up better than SIG did themselves over that weekend. If the MCX Virtus is our M4 AR-15 thing, the MCX Spear is our AR-10, plain and simple. The MCX Spear, even the XM5, does nothing to reinvent the battle rifle wheel. It's simply another well-built receiver system with modern controls and a folding stock. It weighs 8 to 8.5 pounds barrel dependent, putting it solidly in the middle of its rifle category for weight. Yes, it is heavier than the M4, yes, it recoils more than the M4, Yes, our round counts per mag are going to drop by 33%, assuming 20 round mags, and the rounds are heavier than 5.56. They are lighter than 7.62, though. Yes, this means that combat loadout, ammunition discipline, some of TTP work, and the logistics around those concepts are going to change. No, we don't see this as a net negative or significantly impairing the combat performance of the individual rifle user, rifle squad, or the light and mechanized infantry as a whole, who are going to be using these in combined arms. As to the rifle itself, the one we shot was well used and had seen three days of additional Arizona desert heavy use as the demo gun. It shot fine. What was it like? Like shooting an MCX in 308 would feel, or shooting any nice 308 auto loader. It's more recoil than the 6.5 Creedmoor variant with a 16-inch barrel, but not an annoying amount. What was it like shooting in full auto? Like shooting a modern select fire rifle in 308 like a Select Fire SCAR-17. Is it as a controllable as an M4? No. Is it wildly out of control? Thanks to inline recoil and good gassing, no. A short controlled burst is doable on a C-Zone steel plate at reasonable distance. We think the plate was at 60 yards, we got two hits. And if you don't hold it, it'll walk high, miss the third into the dirt. The difference from a 762 and one we didn't have the space to appreciate is that the ammunition performance is drastically better. The muzzle velocity on the XM5 is much higher than the SCAR CQC. The rule of thumb SIG said is add 350 FPS for a 6.8x51 hybrid cased rifle. The feel Shooting the XM5 feels like shooting any nice 13 to 16 inch 308 that has a nice control suite. Name your favorite and it feels about like that. It's as ambidextrous as you could want, has a side charger and a standard AR type charging handle. Both are smooth and easy to use. The recoil spring isn't obnoxiously stiff trying to work the action. The side charge folds smoothly out of the way to reduce snagging likelihood. Adjustable gas. Bolt lock release works smoothly. The trigger is nice in semi-auto and full-auto, braking when we want it. Easily the best trigger the military will be issuing generally that has ever rolled out. It behaves like every other battle rifle pattern we've played with in the last decade, especially the handful of select fire ones we've shot. We think the slightly heavier weight lends itself to the shooter, that the rifle is in the weight it needs to be 
to eat some recoil without being too heavy. That's our two cents on that issue. But it isn't drastically nicer than other nice rifles. It was never meant to be. We think this is what people are getting wrapped around the axle over. Why the MCX? Why not? Nice rifle I like. We feel the answer is, it could have been, it could still be, but why not the MCX? We've heard the combat proven and track records lines a few places, as if any new rifle now needs a work history before it's done being built. This isn't the US job market, these are machines. We've got MRBS numbers to hit, exceed, and improve upon through experimentation. Even if we had fielded a new SCAR or SR-25, it would still be a new rifle in a new round. We had to do it sometime. No combat-proven track records there either. In order to get us off the X of 556 and 762 limitations, we had to do something different. MCX was the pick. The same complainants in the next breath will claim that the XM5 isn't anything new, so why change at all? Which, in all actuality, the XM5 really isn't. It's just a well-built version of a pattern we're really good at these days, AR-10-ish rifles, but in a new caliber. Ladies and gents, it is all about the caliber and the HP HV ammo. The XM250 To those complaining the XM5 is heavier than an M4 and takes a bigger bullet so you can't carry as many, the XM250 is the reason why. It is worth the swap. Seriously, especially those who carried saws will appreciate, it's all worth it here. The XM250 is money. It's the light mash gun dream gun. Anyone who has used an M249 and been frustrated by any aspect of that weapon will love the XM250. Anyone who carried an M240 instead of the M249 to avoid the frustrations of the M249 will love the XM250. That's all before reminding everyone that the XM250 outranges the M249 and the M240. This all at a featherweight division scale tip of 12.1 pounds. An M249 is 17 pounds. The M240L, our weight loss programmed variant, is 22.3 pounds. Breaking Misconceptions The XM250 broke everything we've had to accept for a light mash gun and made it an actual light mash gun, or auto rifle as your nomenclature and use may prefer. Currently, the XM250 is not slated to have a user quick change barrel. The barrel change is really quick and easy, but currently done in a maintainer role and not mid-live fire. The experiences in GWOT showed Army that sticking to one barrel is the practical answer, and Army kept that. The Marines dropped belt feds below the M240 level entirely. This might bring them back. We shall see. They do have quick-change barrel variants done and ready if the Army or any other customer wants that. The advances and advantages in the XM250 continue by fixing and adding to the trigger mechanism. You can work the action with the safety on without breaking anything. Your safety selector is AR style, and you can fire in semi-auto, which is the third position. Far more is offered to the shooter with less to mess up. Charging handle is now on the left, so most shooters will be able to easily use both hands to leverage the gun. The XM250's feed tray opens sideways instead of forward. This makes the tray smaller and prevents optics interfering with loading or being damaged by opening the cover. The recoil mitigation system built into the XM250 is straight, glorious, belt-fed black magic. The gun doesn't recoil so much as it shakes. So much recoil gets taken by the system that much longer bursts are significantly easier. Sight picture is much less disrupted. Controlled auto-fire is possible in far more variations of offhand and poorly supported firing positions, hence your posture remains relaxed. The select fire capability is an important aspect that will increase what the individual troop can do with this weapon and showcases its deliberate development as an auto rifle. The XM250 is a far greater leap forward to the auto rifle and light mash gun users than the XM5 is to the rifleman, no question about that. Lastly, we must mention that the value of the initial delivery order on the Army contract is $20.4 million for weapons and ammunition that will undergo testing. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.